Hello everybody, um, it's Lisa. I haven't been live for a little while so I figured that I would and um, I'm here in the woods in Lilydale and there's a couple of reasons why I wanted to come here um, and share some things with you which I thought would be kind of fun um, and maybe there's some things that you have no idea about and uh, I wanted to just kind of share it so uh, here we go hold on I've got a my selfie stick oh my gosh don't you just love it um, I'm gonna hopefully keep it still I have no idea hi Stephanie um, I'm sitting here in Stump which if any of you don't know about where I live I live in the middle of the woods um, I actually live in a place called Lilydale which is a home of spiritualism in the world um, based upon Hydesville Hydesville is two and a half hours away which is where modern-day mediumship started in 1848 um, and I'll just tell you some things it's quite I'm gonna get eaten alive as well the bugs are here um, but I'm gonna share with with you some stuff some stuff today uh, I've been thinking about this a lot about what I was gonna share and you know being in mediumship in the UK I had a practice and trust me I had a, I had it you know I was busy booked up for months and months and months and it was very very hard for me to leave the UK um, me leaving the UK was probably one of the biggest things because what happened is I was very close to my parents my parents lived over the road from when China went to school and I used to I used to see them every single day and so what happened um, in July uh, a number of years ago is my mom went one way to Spain and I went the other way to LA which was only supposed to be for six weeks six weeks has turned into 11 years and um, I was the biggest I was the absolute biggest homebody and I didn't know anything at that point about I didn't know anything about that in that point about Lilydale, I had no idea. Um, 11 years ago, mediumship really wasn't as um, as prevalent in a way as it is now. And, you know, it became this massive, massive thing for me. And so I came to, um, I came to America, not knowing what to do, not knowing where my life was gonna go, not knowing anything really and uh, hello everybody I'm being eaten alive I'm sorry um, and so I didn't know anybody I came here on a like thinking okay I'm gonna come well it's just turned my 11th anniversary um, a few days ago and I didn't celebrate it because you know things change and things happen and you know you've got a lot of stuff that goes on but I decided to speak today because I want to honor somebody else someone who brought me here 11 years ago um, who I knew a couple of weeks a couple of years before and that was this man okay excuse the hairstyle that was this man Merv Griffin um, those of you who have no idea who Merv Griffin was or is um, he was the absolute absolute biggest icon in um, in TV um, he created Jeopardy he created a lot of TV shows he he's discovered so many talents in the world and I was his last talent um, and he died he died 10 years ago today and I still honor that man every single day because he brought me to America he brought me to America he gave me an opportunity that not many people have and that he brought me to America to actually share my gift with everybody to stand proud and what he did is he taught me he taught me a lot of things he taught me um, how to be confident he taught me how to present myself, and I'm sure he would absolutely turn in his grave right now <laughs> watching me do a Facebook Live. But he told me how to be confident. He told, taught me so many things. 
And I never forget this moment when I had a phone call and he called me and I'd just done Jimmy Kimmel Live. And he called me up the following day and he said, Lisa, I need to speak to you. And I'm like, oh God, I've been summoned up to Merv's house. So I went up to his house and he said, you're going on the Today Show. He said, I need to speak to you. And of course I'm starting to panic. And he literally interviews me for three hours. And I sit there for three hours being interviewed, same question after question after question after question. Um, and he starts telling me, you know, giving me the answers. And I remember I learned from the best. I learned from the absolute best. No matter what it was, he was there for me. And he was there like no end. And I remember him being on my first press junket. I did my first ever press with him. And I'm being eaten alive, I'm sorry. And I remember being being with him and he's like, this is how you are, this is what you do, this is what you wear, this is how you smile, this is how you sit, this is what you do. And I'm telling you, we were on the Insider. Oh, we're, I don't know where we were, but this was at the Insider, as you can see. And it was unbelievable. And since that time, I was only supposed to come over here for six weeks. Six weeks later, the film, show was being filmed, Life Among the Dead, and then it launched in October. Never forget this, October. And I actually remember sitting in the bus as I'm driving. I don't even know whether I was in the bus, but I was sitting somewhere in, Mer in the Mervmobile. Oh my God, the Mervmobile. He lent us his, um, his truck, his trailer that we, we were there. Anyway, so... Um, it was really funny because I was sitting in there with Dallas, um, someone who was looking after me. Uh, Dallas was amazing. And uh, he said, what are you going to do after this? I said, I'll just go back to England and carry on doing my 20 readings a week. And he looked at me like, you are out of your mind, aren't you? He said, if you think you're going back to England and just going back to your readings, he said, you've got another thing coming. You have no idea. And I didn't. I had no idea. And here I am now. Um, I'm sitting in the heart of the spiritualist community in the world, which is like, this is like the place. And I'm so grateful, one for the bugs that I'm going to kill in a minute, um, but two for Merv Griffin. I am very, very grateful for Merv Griffin who brought me here. Um, and I just wanted to have a moment just to honor him and to express my gratitude. And I'm always someone who wants to express gratitude. Um, and he taught me, he taught me so many things. You know, I, I had so many opportunities because of him. I had so many doors open that I'd had no idea. And he truly believed in me. But the one thing that he taught me was to actually believe in yourself. He taught me to believe in myself and to be confident. And I never forget him saying to me, don't lose weight. I never forget him saying to me, do not lose weight. Do not become skinny and scrawny. And I said, why? And he said to me, he said, because people won't, won't associate with you. You're normal, Lisa. That's the one thing that people love about you is that you're normal. And yeah, okay, I have lost some weight because I needed to for health reasons. But I'm still my curvy thing. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change. But it was powerful. And these people that change our lives, we have to remember that these people change our lives for a reason, that things change. We are in a society where we have to continually change, and we have to. And I did not want to leave England. I was happy being in England. I was happy doing all of this stuff. And trust me, when it comes to me changing, oh my God, these bugs, I'm gonna have a moment of silence for the dead bug I just got in my hand. Um, but seriously, when, when things change, we have to embrace it. Um, and we have to embrace, and we have to realize that people come into our life for reasons people come into our life for reasons and seasons and I knew Merv for a long well for three years and he became we became very close um, you know Charlie would play with his dog and we would go in you know on the boat and everything else and it's because of him I met other people my best friend that died the whole thing and what was interesting is you know these people come into our lives for reasons they may not stay like that bug's not gonna stay. But they may not stay, but 
when they come in they impact your life and they change your life and I can tell you now I am the happiest I have ever been I am so happy I have a very solid family life I have friends and family that I love and they are amazing but I wanted to really just share with you that don't be ever be afraid of change don't ever be afraid of those change don't ever be afraid um, I tell you what I'm gonna really I feel like just slapping myself uh, and I put bug spray on um, but don't ever be afraid of change the change is gonna happen and if you allow spirit to be to guide you you'll find that it will it, they'll just it will happen spirit will just change spirit will just guide you and what will be is meant to be when we let go of expectation because it's our expectation that completely gives us anger it's our expectation that lets us down because we have this expectation and we want things to have a certain outcome and we we want to control the outcome and that's fine and so when we have that it creates this this unhappiness or it creates this thing you know this anxiousness this uptight feeling and so honestly we really have to embrace it and if you are going through change as some of you have said on the Facebook live if you are going through change just remember that change is going to happen you're still going to be okay you're still going to be okay throughout it it's just the fact is that that when it happens it's scary it really is scary and take moment by moment not day by day because you can't take it day by day because sometimes those days are massive huge things and your emotions are on a massive roller coaster but you have to take it moment by moment and when you take it moment by moment you know those moments become so fragile and you're so fragile in that moment that you just have to just go okay I'm just gonna take it step by step step by step and you know what you're gonna be okay because trust me I'm living proof that things are okay. I am absolutely living proof that things are okay. When I've fought the health situations, when I've fought my living situations, when I've fought my relationship situations, you know, half of you don't know the stories. In my book, Life Among the Dead, that's only like a small percentage of what I've written about. You know, I always say that the real book's gonna come out when I'm 80 and I'm about to die, but seriously, um, when, when, when you know the full ins and outs and you see it, you know you realize that life's too short you've got to grab it by the horns you've got to just go with it allow change to happen be genuine be absolutely genuine be an open book don't be so uptight be vulnerable allow people to see the real you we don't want fear there's no point in having fear we have to just surrender and give and and seriously that's what I did I surrendered and I surrendered to spirit and here I am in this amazing place and it's getting darker slowly but you know, here I am in this incredible place with Merv Griffin, and I'm I'm just about to leave the stump now because I am getting bitten and eaten alive. But when we when we allow ourselves just to totally surrender, you never know what will happen. And you know, I'll tell you now a little bit private thing, but you know, I am the happiest I've ever done because I surrendered into a relationship that I was absolutely scared of and he's waiting for me there because he said this is important to you go and do it and when you see that people are there to support you and you just don't care you come from that place of love you come from that place of acceptance you come from that place of just being authentic trust me people are going to stand by you people are going to see the real you and that's what I want to give thanks to I want to give thanks to Merv Griffin I want to give thanks to Elaine who supported me and sadly passed away I want to give thanks to all of these people that supported me and took me on the journey because if it wasn't for them believing in me they wouldn't have given me the confidence to believe in myself and that's what we all, all strive into it's finding the confidence that we can we can we can be who we want to be and be who we should be it's not about hiding behind closed doors anymore it's about being honest and open to who we really are and so that's what I wanted to put you know I just feel very very passionate about it and so thank you for listening and and just honoring this but um, thanks everybody I yeah thank you Julie Julie you were part of that transformation Julie Stern all right everyone Julie Stern was part of that transformation she saw me right from the very beginning and you know she saw me scared on the set she used to sit there Lisa you're gonna be okay you're gonna be okay oh my god that was amazing reading Julie I love you and you know she absolutely it takes a team you have to realize that it might be the fact that 
that um, you know it, it takes a team you, you have to realize that it's not just one person I might be in front of the camera but it takes a team of people you know that team of people are everybody everyone at lifetime were incredible Merv Griffin's office were incredible all my family and friends that supported me at the time were incredible and people continue to support you now so don't look at those people look for them they are there they want to support you they want to be part of your life and just allow it to be allow it to be that you know that support network for you because trust me when they are there for you they're there for you no hidden agendas you know just allow everything to be and when you when you allow yourself to surrender into that moment I'm gonna tell you now spirit will lead you the way absolutely lead you the way so you have to just trust and surrender and just be <sighs> anyway I'm gonna go it's a Saturday night um, I'm off to honor the fact that I have, I'm 11 years here it's a master number 11 um, and Merrick Griffin's passing God rest his soul bless him and um, yeah it was it was kind of a tough time the last time I saw him him and my husband were arguing it was just horrible but that was never that's not gonna be my last memory of him it was you know the last memory of him I tell you what the last memory of him was we were on Third Street Promenade and he's got little video camera watching me do a reading and Jan, Jan de Bon, who wanted to say, no, 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 she's not got this one. And he went, wait for it. And he, we used to call it the lifetime moment. And he said, he said, wait for it. And he went three, two, one. And this woman started to cry and he said, that's my girl. And I never forget that. So I just, I just love Merv. Anyway, good night guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I know it's a little bit dark now, um, but I'm getting eaten alive and I'm, I'm going off on my little golf cart run. Um, <sighs> Thanks for being there. See you soon. Happy weekend. Bye.